Welcome to another treatment of the International Sunday School lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Delivered from Fear. And it's taken from Matthew the 8th chapter, verses 23 through 27. And it's for the summer quarter, lesson number 2, 2021, for June the 13th, 2021. Now, a little background information. This, today's lesson, uh, takes place on the Sea of Galilee. Now, the Sea of Galilee is called multiple things in scriptures. Uh, some places in scriptures is referred to as the Sea of Tiberias. Uh, other places, it's called the Lake of Gennesaret. Sometimes it's called the Sea and... Sometimes it's called the lake. In the Old Testament, uh, it was called the Sea of Chinnereth, or the Sea of Chinneroth. And in the book of the Maccabees, it's referred to as the water of Gennesar. And in modern times, we would have a tendency to call this more of a lake than a sea. Uh, this body of water from the north to the south was about 13 miles in length and at its widest portion it was seven miles across. And it was, I mean, you know, it was a good size lake or a very small See, and there were times where it would have a significant uh, storms would come up, and they would come up uh, unexpectedly, and that's what happens in today's story. And also, too, it's important for us to realize that the fishing boats that were on this sea or lake. The fishing boats were uh, more or less small kinds of fishing boats and that a good storm would very easily trigger capsizing and the people inside of it drowning. And that if you were in that large of a body of water, uh, you could very easily drown before you could get to one side or the other if you were in the middle of the body of water. And those is the, that's the locale of this story today. Okay, Matthew 8, 23 and 24. Then he got up into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Now we know from the story of the same event in the book of Mark that there were other boats with them. Mark 4.36 says, Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And that's how the book of Mark describes this. But we see here where Jesus is tired and he takes a nap. Now, possibly he was taking a nap to give the apostles a, an opportunity for a learning experience. It may also have been just simply that he had been uh, struggling and working and toiling, ministering to the people and was exhausted and just needed to sleep and just went to sleep. Either way, we see here where uh, the storm suddenly comes upon them 
out in the middle of the sea and the suddenly the storm suddenly comes upon them and Jesus is asleep and the waves are coming up and they are rolling over into the boat and they were in danger of having the boat capsize on them and they were afraid. Matthew 8 and 25. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. So we see here that even at this early stage of Jesus' ministry, the apostles had seen so much deliverance that Jesus has done that they knew where to turn to. And it's so critical as we go through life for us to know who to turn to when things happen in our lives. And we see an abundant cases in the Bible of people experiencing that. Second Chronicles 14 and 11, Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere mortals prevail against you. So here we have a king who is going out against this strong army and realizes that the deliverance can come from God. The psalmist in Psalm 65, 5 through 9, He answered us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas. Who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength? Who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the turmoil of the nations? The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. And it is so critical as we go through life, it is so critical that when we're faced with situations that we know exactly where to turn to, to turn to God, the one who stepped out in the nothingness and called the universe into being, the one who called the children of Israel out of Egypt's bondage, the one who uh, looked at Daniel in the lion's den and sent angels down there to protect him and was the most amazing deliverance, the one that saw the three Hebrew children thrown into the fiery furnace and came down and actually uh, sustained them and kept them from burning uh, alive. That's who we need to turn to when we are faced in our times of trouble. Those times when we are sick and afflicted, when members of our family are sick and afflicted, those times when we've lost a job, those times where... Uh, It looks like everything has 
uh, turning against us, those times when there is a pandemic going through the nation and people are getting sick and dying all around us, those times where the economy is all tore up, those times where the uh, prices shoot sky high, those times when there's uh, supply chain has been shut down by different things, we need to know where to turn to. And the place to turn to is to the Lord our God because there's deliverance. There's deliverance in our God. Just a little talk with Jesus is going to make it all right. And that's what we need to be fully aware of, is that we need to turn to God when things are not going our way, when we have difficulties all around us, when we're having difficulty with those children we're trying to raise, when we're having difficulty with our spouses, when we're having difficulty with our kinfolk, when we're having difficulty with our neighbors. We need to turn to God for that peace that He can bring, that peace that passes all understanding. We need to turn to God when we don't know what to do. When we... Uh, don't have the foggiest clue how to solve a problem. We need to turn to God. I was telling somebody just yesterday of an instance that happened to me in my profession. I had been working on something for about three days and hadn't hardly slept in the least little bit. And I got down in the middle of the floor in my office and got to praying to God. I said, look, God, I know I'm stupid, and you know I'm stupid. I'm going to need some help on how to figure this one out. And within about 45 minutes, I had an answer of how to do it. Now, I didn't hear the a thundering voice when it happened, but there is not a doubt in my mind that God gave me the wisdom at that point to solve that problem. I think he just wanted me to get down off my high horse and remember where the strength comes from. Okay? Remember where you can turn to. Remember where your help comes from. Okay? Matthew 8 and 26. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Let me tell you something. God does not want us to live in fear. Now, yes, he wants us to have common sense. He wants us to think things through. He don't want us to be silly or frivolous or anything like that. But he does not want us to be in fear. He does not want us to be in fear. You know, multiple times he'd call uh, the people of God out to do a mission and he would tell them to be brave and courageous. Joshua 1, 6, and 7, when God was calling uh, Brother Joshua out to take over for Moses, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the, all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. The psalmist said, Psalms 27 and 14, Wait for the Lord be strong and take heart and wait for 
the Lord. Let me tell you something. Fear can paralyze you. It can make you to where uh, you just want to roll over and play dead. Uh, back years ago when I was a, a much younger man and, and a lot more healthier, uh, I taught Taekwondo for the Parks Department for about five years. Not as a profession, but you know, this, this is a, as one of my hobbies. And you teach kids Taekwondo, and if you had a kid that would get really afraid, it would be like it would almost paralyze them. You had to give them a little, you had to encourage them to be courageous and not be afraid. Because if you had a kid that would be really afraid, they would tense up and could not even hardly protect themselves while they were doing the sport. So in, in our lives, we are the same way. If you get all afraid and have that paralyzing fear, you can't accomplish the things that God wants you to do. Now, again, let me reemphasize, this is not, I'm not saying be foolish and don't be cautious and don't think through things. It isn't uh, being fearful to not, tr not run your car at 100 miles an hour. That's being smart and <laughs> reasonable not to take your car and run no 100 miles an hour going down the freeway, okay? But don't be afraid to get in your car and go somewhere. If the Lord wants you to go do something, don't be afraid and all tensed up and paralyzed in fear. Do not be afraid to go do what God's called you to do. Okay? Matthew 8 and 27. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Now stop and think about it. After the resurrection... And after everything had really sunk in on these apostles, they gave it all up and faced enormous hardships, enormous dangers to preach the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what gave them the courage to go do that? Because they had seen and remembered these things of these miracles where he, Jesus gave forth the proof that he was who he said he was. Now Matthew 15, 29 and through 31 talks about the same kind of thing. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. See, Jesus, when he was here on this earth, gave forth a multitude of proofs that he was who he said he was. And who did he say he was? The only begotten Son of God. The only one who was worthy to pay the price for our sins on that cross. And then three days later to be resurrected as proof that the atonement was accepted to God the Father. And Jesus gave proof after proof after proof that he was who he said 
he was. Okay? Now, in conclusion, let me just encourage each and every one of us, myself included, to approach our life, approach the work of God with courage. To not let ourselves be paralyzed with fear. To approach raising our children. To approach raising our grandchildren. Approach interacting with folks. To approach being a testimony in the community. To approach the job losses to approach the illness, to approach the battle with cancer, to approach the hardship of hard times, to approach all of this with courage, to have faith in God to see us through. And faith in God does not necessarily mean things are going to work out like you first originally wanted them to work out. I keep thinking about those three Hebrew children. And they told the, the Nebuchadnezzar, our God's able to, to deliver us from this fiery furnace, but if he doesn't, we still ain't going to bow down and worship this idol. And that's the kind of thing we need to have in our mind. To have the confidence that eventually it will all work out. Now, we may have to struggle with a situation till the day we die. But on the other side of that grave... Everything's going to be all right. It's going to all work out in the end. We may have to have hardships for a while, but joy is coming in the morning. We need to have the confidence and the courage to see this thing through. Well, friends, good Lord willing, we'll be back with you next weekend.